So a little bit came from like a from necessity really. Like I never really set out to to start a studio. <laughs> pricey to make a bill by the way because we get a lot of people asking us oh where are you gonna get a feature bill like i know i just don't have like 200 million in my back pocket just to make released a uh, teaser that we did for Soul, yeah. and people just started roasting the character's feet. Yeah, and that's, like, just, that's so specific. That's like, come on, guys, <laughs> those feet. So I yeah, guess that's the point that I don't want. People are not liking it. Like our artists here, some of them got really depressed. Like, yeah, like depression, yeah. like actual depression. I'm just a dude, man. <laughs> I, yeah, so I wasn't a great A student, by the way. Because yeah. <laughs> I wasn't, I was Came like... Came out the mud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I struggled. Pretty much, like, pre-internet days, like you said. Yeah. It was really difficult, but it kind of made work as, as a bunch of friends and stuff. Exactly. I'll figure. So I ain't mad about that. It's great seeing you again, man. Last, Thanks, man. <laughs> when did I last see you? Um, 2018. 2018. That was the last time. <laughs> and we had a, a pretty fantastic conversation. It was. I mean, like, I just feel like, you know, we're both onto something. And it's like every time we meet, and we do <laughs> talk on, vibes. yeah, we do talk online. But rarely as well. well. Rarely, but you know, it's like we're on a we're on a journey. And uh, what's great that you uh, chose to have this interview again. Uh, yes, it's I guess been nearly half a decade later. I, I'm, I'm sure changed, some things have changed. So you know, um, COVID. Is that? I, I I definitely would have seen you last year at Com Exposed. Definitely would have seen you again there. But we were there because because it happened online. Yeah, but I mean, seeing you. Oh, you see, know, yeah, 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 yeah. Zoom call vibes and and yeah, just <laughs> having that different. that it's, stuff it's just different. taken away from us is and it, it it's crazy. But yeah, man, I'm I'm glad you you made time for me like this. Uh, I'm sure it's a pleasure. <laughs> it's a pleasure. I'm sure people it's who no are gonna be watching yeah. this are gonna are gonna be glad as well. But you know, I know you, I think I know you pretty well, mm -hmm. but you know, the people who are watching this really don't know you as much. So, you know, I would say, who is Pius Nino? <laughs> I'm just a dude, man. <laughs> <laughs> not, not the humble version, not the humble version. <laughs> I don't know, like it's always a difficult question. You know, I, I'm an animator. Yeah. Or more so, I'd say I'm a storyteller. Yeah. And I tell stories through animation. At the core of it, you know, before we start talking about, oh, I do this and that and that. I'm just a storyteller. I love telling stories and animation is what I do. We're actually having that same conversation with, um, with uh, like, uh, one of the, the senior guys here in terms of, like, who, who are you? Why do we do animation? Yeah. And we thought of that and they were like, wait, we do animation because we have stories to tell. So, like, how do we want to tell the stories? Do you want to film? Do we want to do we want to do two D animation? Do we want to do three D animation? Yeah. So I guess basically core at the core of it, I'm just a guy telling stories through animation. Yeah, that that, that is what, fantastic, yeah, right? That's what <laughs> <laughs> but then that becomes more interesting because of where we are, where mm, Zimbabwe, yeah. and so there's not very many people like Pius in here. <laughs> so you know. The thing that comes to my mind then is like, when did you know you, you wanted to become an animator and, and maybe how did you know you wanted to become an animator? I knew that I wanted to do, okay, I'll say make cartoons Yeah. at a very early age. Because I loved cartoons. I mean, like, you, you, 
after school rushing, you know, yeah. and, 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 and all that stuff. Yeah. But something that, that always intrigued me is how the hell do they make them? You know, how the hell do you make a drawing movie? Yeah. That's what I found interesting. But I didn't know it was called animation. Of course. But I knew that it was interesting. <laughs> Whichever way that they're doing it, I know there's a weird technology. And as I got older and in high school, I discovered it's called animation. You know, I was like, all right, cool. But it seemed like a weird, distant thing, you know, because yeah. not a lot of people were talking about animation in Zim in back Zim. in 2007, at least that I know, <laughs> you know, and... Um, and we didn't really have the internet like that back then. It wasn't. Like, it was kind of there, <laughs> yeah. but not like it is now. Yeah, like very few people had it. It was like having DSTV. Remember how fancy DSTV was? Early 2000s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like um, we didn't have that, so you didn't even know where to find this information. But I remember reading it in a magazine. It was like, oh, so that's a thing that you could actually do. Yeah. And um, I got older, you know, and by the time I graduated high school, I knew that this could be a profession that you would do because we used to have like these DVDs, the original DVDs, and you watch yeah. it behind the scenes. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, so people, actual that old people thing. do that. But I didn't know where to, where to, where to study it. So, you know, I, but by, by the time I was 16, I already knew that I wanted to make cartoons. Yeah. My family thought I just loved cartoons, I didn't want to grow up. But really, yeah. I already made up my mind by, by that time, you know. That this so, is what I'm going to do. Yeah, but I'll say I started. I I I knew I wanted to make cartoons when I was a kid, really. It was a kid, but I made my decision uh, in my late teens that I really wanted to do animation as a profession. Yeah. And um, you know, went to study art because like there was no animation school here. Yeah. You know, and then was doing animation at home on the side. And but I been but boom, here we are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So let's talk about that study, the, the studying aspect, because a lot of people will think, um, I'm in Zim, there's no school teaching animation per se, mm. or if there is now, it's, it's still one of those things that you still have to convince your parents. And mm. so did you, were you in Zim or did you leave Zim and then come back? How did that process work where you've left high school now and you're forging this path that you've decided to walk? You never left Zim soil. For animation, I never. Ah. Yeah, I mean, you can go to school. I guess that's the age-old question that a lot of people ask. Like, do you, should I go to school? Yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> if you have the means to go to school, go. If you don't have the means, there's YouTube. You know, um, I personally didn't li leave Zim. I damn near wanted to. I <laughs> I uh, applied to Art Institute of Kansas City. Yeah. And I got accepted. But the tuition was just insane. I didn't even yeah. tell my parents until like after, after like three, four years. I was like, oh, I actually got into art <laughs> in Kansas City. And um, I'm like, oh, what happened? I was like, oh, that was like four years ago. <laughs> yeah, like I wasn't going to give you a heart attack with yeah. just telling you how much it was yeah. going to cost. And you know, that's something that would really like break your parents because they yeah. want you to go there, but yeah. they can't afford to say, yeah, well, you so, know, just the pressure is. Yeah, I didn't tell them. But what I found quite quite a, interesting was the fact that I got accepted. Yeah. So I was like, oh, so I could actually go. Yeah. But I was really studying art at a poly, and uh, I was. Oh, so you're a poly guy. I'm That's poly cool. guy, the, down to the <laughs> core. Yeah. What's up, people Nana Shiri? Won't, people won't pick that up when they hear you speak. You've got this. I know. You've got right? this thick accent. This almost American accent. Like. On air, right? Let me let me tell you the <laughs> truth. Uh, so my my brother when we were watching some footage of you speak, uh, preparing for this. Yeah. He was like, "Is this guy? Did he leave Zim?" I'm like, "This guy has no, born and raised." Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a heartbreaking story. <laughs> Heartbreaking, but it's a conversation we're gonna have on another day. Yeah, so yeah <laughs> but yeah, but yes, this this poly guy. Yeah, I'm a poly guy. You know, went to another poly. Um, so that's where you're doing art. I was I was doing art. Okay. Yeah, and then from there, I was doing animation on the side. You know, at home, and um, pretty much like pre-internet days, like you said. Yeah, it was really difficult, but we kind of made work as, as as a bunch of friends in class. Yeah, please talk me through that because I'm trying to figure out. Because the moment you said YouTube, I I don't even think I knew it existed in 2007 because I was pretty young as well. But yeah, yeah, like it was, it was. I have a friend named Josh. He's actually one of the environment artists here. Yeah. He was doing 3D, 
and I had a passion for for three D, but I just didn't know where to find this. And we 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 had softwares that we're sharing, yeah. And um, you know, we started sharing the softwares in, in, in class, and they yeah. were quite amazed at, at what we could do. And internet was just starting to become a thing, kind of. Yeah. But before that, we had like these DVDs that his friend had given us. Oh. It was like four gigabyte. That one was the cream of all the <laughs> tons of resources that I. <laughs> It was like just one DVD that had that had talks with with the professionals and stuff like that, yeah. and I would watch that over and over. And from the seminars that they would have, I'd pick up stuff from there and I started doing all, all this stuff and with yeah. the boys in class. Um, but it seemed like at that time I was the most driven in terms of animation. Yeah, we were studying art at school, but on the side as boys, we were also doing animation. animation. Yeah, so. I actually argue that when I graduated art um, at Poly, I actually graduated as an animator too. Yeah. Because like by that time, I was already getting freelance jobs. Oh. Yeah, for yeah, for three D, you know, that's and good. it was it was it was great because I was actually getting paid and it, I was turning the thing into money. You know, I was actually doing less what I studied for <laughs> and more animation. Yeah, and then after that, I went to Ziva. I think like a year after. Um, and I was Ziva to being the Zimbabwean Institute for Visual Art. Exactly, that's the okay. one. Yeah. And uh, I really, you know, because really, they were teaching animation at that time, okay. but I was already doing uh, animation. So I went there, you know, because I wanted to get certified. Yeah. I figured, you know, I should get certified. Yeah. So I went there because I wanted to get certified. I remember showing my my show reel, and the instructor that was there at that time. His soul rest in peace, uh, David Creighton. Yeah. He saw the work and was like, dude, you know, you're, you're amazing, man. Like, <laughs> why, why do you want to study here? And I was just like, you know, there's something that I probably don't know that I might get from an actual institute that teaches animation. But when I got there, you know, I, I did learn new, uh, the industry standard program yeah. called Autodesk Maya. Yeah. So it wasn't total, you know. It wasn't but, a waste of time. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. But yeah. I noticed that... The, 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 the learning process was very slow for me and <laughs> you know, it was very slow because I would do like a two month assignment in one <laughs> night and it wasn't because I was bragging uh, but, but you had already put I'd in already those hours put in all those hours so like modeling true, something that others true. were starting was so you had skin in the game <laughs> I was already in the game yeah so but I didn't drop out mm -hmm. so to go back to your question about like you know do you need to go to school you definitely to you do if you got the money please do if you don't Look, there's tons of resources on the internet True. to teach you that. True. Yeah, basically that's uh, how I got how here. You, that's yeah. fantastic. But you know, like one of the the important things you you said there, and and I think something that people um, won't realize, be it a, an animator looking to you and saying, "Damn, this is the holy grail. This is where we want to go," mm. or just someone who's got a a craft of whatever craft they have. There's this syndrome where you look at someone's end product. But someone won't understand that you were grinding, we said since 2007, maybe even before that, right? Yes. Yeah, and we're in 2021. That's yes. nearly, that's what, a decade and a half of yeah. work. 14 years of work. Of being and broke and hungry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like a lot of sacrifice. Yeah. But then people see, people have conversations with almost what, of course you're not like the finished product mm. but now you can stand with titans and be like this is my work right yeah and people get so intimidated but these things take like a lot of effort and, and sweat and tears mm. another aspect i'll be super intrigued to hear is what was the situation with family like like did you have to convince them or you were fortunate you were fortunate enough to have a family that would let you walk your own path I was I was part of the I was one of the lucky ones really yeah. because like like I said like I already knew that I wanted to do cartoons ever, yeah. ever since I was I was a, I was a kid <laughs> you know so when I came up with that whole idea because I actually flunked my oath you know it wasn't because I wasn't studying yeah it was because I wasn't studying <laughs> my I flunked and my old man when they saw my results they saw math English you know and, and all the stuff he knew that it was. So he just asked me, like, dude, what do you want to do? And I was like, you know, I want to do art. I was like, yeah, I mean, he knew that I was really an artist. Yeah. So it wasn't like a tough deci decision for him. So I repeated um, with the idea that I'm going to do art. I hadn't told him I want to do animation. I told him I want to do art. Mm -hmm. 
So my family was quite supportive. You know, I went and I didn't repeat it, but I kind of repeated because I supplemented to ah, really okay. get more um, to get the required. Yeah. So I wasn't a grade A student, by the way. Yeah. Because <laughs> I wasn't. I was <laughs> came like, out the mud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I struggled, but my old man was just like, "Yo, do what you got to do." So yeah. what do you want to do after? And I, uh, I went and enrolled at the poly, like I said, and um, I knew that I wanted to be to do animation. But at that time, like I said, I didn't know where to study. Yeah. So when I was there, my dad was really supportive. He didn't understand what I was doing. All he knew is that the kid is doing art. Doing I something. don't know what I'm paying for it because you do a lot of things when you're studying art. Sometimes you do life drawing. Sometimes you're doing pottery. Sometimes you're doing ah, this. Okay, yeah. So he didn't know. But he also knew Very that... Very different from being a doctor, isn't it? It's completely <laughs> different because <laughs> one day you're pitching Kumba Nechi... Day, yeah, it's a combo, it's just a machine, like a shell, yeah. And then you're drawing it, and it's just like, What are you doing? <laughs> it's like, it's like, I don't know, how is this guy going to survive? Yeah, so I understand how some parents would think that is super weird, yeah. But my, my family's super supportive, oh, that's great, yeah. So, um, that's great. But when, when I wanted to do when I started doing animation now, and I was using the computer, my old man actually thought I was doing architecture of some sort. Ah, and when he discovered why, why, why was that? Is it the straight lines and the renders and whatnot? <laughs> yeah, it's because I was doing a lot of. Remember, I told you I was getting paid. Yeah. I was doing a lot of architectural pivots, you know, oh. and stuff like that, doing three D. So he thought that's what I'm. So when I told him we're gonna study animation, he really didn't know what animation was, but it's just I'm just gonna pay for it. Yeah, and you and know? also it it helps to be getting paid at that point as well. So exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah. So like, okay, this could be a thing for real. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I was one of the fortunate ones to actually have a supportive family. Yeah. So, yeah. That's fantastic, man. But for me, I, I really want us to like keep exploring these uh, formative years because animation as well is a scary one because when people think of it, they think of, uh, I need to have a beastly PC or a beastly laptop. And we've had this conversation before. Mm. It wasn't like that for you. So... How did you work around that? And, you know, what did you start with? You know, what was the base for you? You know, I didn't know better back then. So I guess complacency was a blessing. Ignorance is bliss. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know better. So I was like, I didn't know that. I knew you needed a bigger computer. Yeah. But I just worked with what I had because that's what I had. Yeah. So... I was really playing around in that whole ignorance is bl it was bliss thing. So everything was quite, for me, I was, just, I was just intrigued by the idea that I'm doing animation. I didn't yeah. think about like, also my renders are gonna take 20 I hours and I need more of this. I knew that you needed more RAM, but I also knew I didn't have the money. And I knew the computer was expensive. I was like, I'm just gonna do the best that I can with this computer. Yeah. So I really honed that whole idea of like, use what you have and for me, like the first thing that I always try to remove was the idea of excuses. Yeah. You know, it's like, um, oh, I can't do this thing because I don't have this thing. But it's like, yeah, but what do you have? True. And what do you, what do you have that's going to facilitate your journey to make it easy to get to, to what you have? Yeah. So, it's it's true. When I started, I didn't have these beastly computers. The triple monitor setup. <laughs> I didn't have the triple monitor setup. It was like a dream. Yeah. You know, um, I think four. <laughs> Because, yeah, the other one, the, the intern took it. I actually have, like, a drawing tablet that I have right here. So I have a four monitors, monitor set up. Yeah. But um, I just used what I had. And I slowly upgraded. And when I upgraded, I didn't notice it. So, like, I never... There was never really a point where I just thought, oh, I need more RAM. Even though I did need it. Yeah. I was just like, all right, so what are going to do with what I have? And I'm... Rarely was I thinking of the, the hardware and, and stuff like that. Yeah. I was just thinking, yo, I need to make this thing. And then if it's going to take 20 hours, I remember I, I had a 20 hour <laughs> render and when it was done, there was a mistake. After oh. 20 hours. So. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, so just use what you have, you know, that <laughs> helps very much. Yeah, so yeah, pretty much uh, I honed the mantra of use what you have, man. No, that's fantastic. Yeah. And, and and maybe moving away from the from the formative stuff now. So now you're like the studio lead at Alule Animation. Mm. Um, you know, what is Alule Animation? When did you guys start and how did that come about? So Alula came from like a from necessity really. 
Like I never really set out to to start a studio. You know. Remember I told you that I was already doing animation on the side, right? Yeah. But it got to a point where, you know, demand was getting like with, well, I was now getting overwhelmed, overwhelmed with work, you know, and I also understood that you need to seem seem bigger. Like I had, there's this uh, friend of mine who told me that look, you need to seem bigger than you actually are. Never say I. Never say this. Always say we. You know, yeah. a friend of mine owns Wisdom. He has a uh, he owns what do you call what do you call that um, Cyrix branding. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, he actually told me like, yo, I just never say I. Just always say we. We, us. You know, yeah, us. Like, you always say, I'm going to think about it, this and this and that. Yeah. So I call this, like, the puffer fish effect. Because, you know, puffer fish inflates <laughs> to make itself look bigger. Yeah. So that's what I did. Like, I was masquerading. I was, I was like, a big studio and stuff. Like, but I was just, like, with, one scrawny little the, guy. The, <laughs> you know, with and, the studio. Yeah. And, and I was saying, no, workers. well, yeah, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna review the whole thing. And I come back here at home and just... <laughs> How reviewing gonna, the whole thing. Reviewing the whole thing. <laughs> but I guess like that really worked. Yeah. And you know, coming up with the studio, you get to a point where you're not dealing with bigger clients. They want their tax clearance and all this stuff. And work again internally was not getting overwhelming. I was getting like three ads that I have to run simultaneously in production. Yeah. You need I couldn't do it. And now you really needed a we. I really needed that we <laughs> to be be a thing. And then yeah. You just get to a point where you're just like, you know what? We have the guys. We have the name. Why don't we just make it official? Yeah. So technically, Alula has been on the ground for five years now. But as a studio, we just made three years on the 25th of... Oh, it was Africa Day, actually. 25th of May? Yeah. Wow, that's... That's, when the, that's the, a very interesting... <laughs> yeah. That's an interesting one. <laughs> yeah, so we just turned three uh, just a couple of days ago. No nah, man, I'll say cheers to to the half decade because you told me five, so I'm running with five. Yeah, yeah. As a <laughs> cheers to the to the yeah. half decade, and and so what what are you guys focusing on? Are you guys uh, doing feature length films, or are you guys doing? You mentioned something about commercials, like ads yeah. getting overwhelming. What's your space right now, or at least predominantly when you, the past three years, three to five years, as you as you said, what has been your space? Adverts. Why? Well, first of all, I would say easy money. Oh, there's, not, there's never a word easy, but <laughs> relatively. Where, relatively, you could get ads, you know, money, uh, financial stability in the advertising industry. Yeah. Because it's a simple transaction. Yeah. I offer a service, and then you give me money. And you do it in a very short space of time. And it also trained us to be faster and efficient. And it also helped us to... Ads also helped us to, to do a lot of R&D, research and design in terms of animation and because one of the biggest problems that we had was finding artists and so uh -huh. you had to find a half-baked artist and then you bring them to the studio and then through advertising and all that stuff they'll get to, yeah, to you practice work more, you know, work okay. more and then gain that experience yeah so ads are very straightforward you know but obviously as a studio like we're operating in ad in the ad Ad, advertising space because of necessity yeah you know obviously we wanted to film i know where your heart lies <laughs> yeah we wanted to look like, like i said like i said i'm a storyteller yeah you know one day i want to tell films you know talk about our people and all this stuff so i don't know when that's gonna happen yeah uh but that's really where we want to head to man that's the north star that's the north star yeah 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 you, but man. right yeah. now we're put Doing all these ads and practice for when we get the when the, you get the feature film, to when we get the the chance to actually make a feature film.
Anti smash safety window tents from Audio City. Loudly Zimbabwean. So, so since we're speaking about that, I will ask you <laughs> is there anything in the pipeline in terms of feature films? Because, and I asked this because when I came here in 2018, when we really? last had that conversation, you showed me some interesting concepts. Um, I've forgotten the name of it, but it was really like Afrocentric stuff and it was. Execute. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, the one with the snake? Is it the one? Yeah, that's execute. Okay, so that yeah, is yeah. the one. Wow, yeah. you, you do remember that. You showed me <laughs> that and, and it really looked intriguing. I, I really loved that. So Yeah. I mean, Execute is our baby. It's an internal little project that we yeah. started working on in 2017. And that was before the studio was like a thing. Yeah. And that was just about the time, actually. When it was about to be. Yeah, out. yeah. And it's a, it's a short film that's an opening to a bigger film that we wanted to make. And um, kind of ran out of budget, as most filmmakers do. <laughs> yeah. Ran out of money, and then we had to make it work. And we got to a point where we're like, all right, so we ran out of money here. Let's go yeah. back to the studio. So we have like all the stories in the pipeline that we hopefully would want to tell. And yeah. execute being like our when we get the chance to make the film, it is something that we have placed on pause. Uh, for obvious yeah. financial reasons. It's, yeah. it's a bit pricey to make a film, by the way, because we get a lot of people asking us, oh, where are you going to get a feature film? Yeah. Like, yeah. I know, I just don't have like 200 million in my back pocket just to make the film. Just to make the film. Again. Yeah, but you know, I'm quite positive because like the strides that we, the things that we were able to achieve in the in a very short space of time gets me to be very optimistic. Yeah, I guess. yeah. And, and so when I was researching this, um, I felt a... A different level of respect for you because I've always seen your work, right? Mm. And but because uh, they were ads, I always wondered what the ceiling was uh, with them being ads. Mm. Whereas we've had the story about uh, telling long, longer stories through right, feature films yeah. and whatnot. We've had that conversation a couple of times. And then uh, I saw an interview where you were saying um, you were nominated uh, for a couple of two of your ads. I think got nominated yeah, for yeah, awards at a won. French. They actually won. Yeah, like uh, we have like Angoma Award, the one here, and then there was another one that we collaborated with. Um, actually, the two that we did yeah. actually won, um, and then the other one. Which that we, ones? It's true. I'm, I'm geez, we've done a lot. <laughs> we've, done, <laughs> we've done a lot, but I think that's the very first one that we did for Stuart Bank, the Zama Zama one. And oh. the second one was the one that followed after with the pregnancy one. I don't know if you've seen that one. I, I saw the Stuart Bank one, not the pregnancy one. Yeah, and th that one actually won. And then there's another one collaborated with uh, Shift Engage. I didn't see that. There were actually two of them, actually, with the, with the bird that was falling and burning yeah. from uh, the stratosphere. And then there was a Lobos one with Angus. Yeah, that there was, one. Yeah, there was That's a fantastic one. Yeah, they were actually nominated for, for Louis, I think. I think Brat and... Brett and all the Shift Engage team would would um, would, know, would, would, would correct me exactly, <laughs> yeah. yeah, because um, we collaborated with, with us and they were pushing that that side. But you know, it was kind of like a pat on the back that we're doing it. So in terms of like what you meant, like by the, the glass ceiling. So yeah. remember, I said that we're storytellers. And yeah. If you look at our ads, we treat them like short films. Okay? Exactly. Because I look, always looked at it. all right. So if I meet you today, and then I'm like, I got a story to tell you. Right. Yeah. Oh, I want to tell you something that happened on the way here. Yeah. How long is it going to take me for you me to narrate what happened? I'll be like, yo, father, you don't. <laughs> I woke up in the morning and I did this and that and that. And I met this dude. He punched me. And I'm able to tell you a full story in about 15 seconds. Yeah. So 30 seconds to one minute. It's there's, ample there's time for you to, to tell a story. Yeah. So that's what we do in ads. You know, we tell these little stories in 30 seconds to a minute the yeah that sounds, that sounds super stressful but i mean you you guys have had a lot of practice over the mm. years you, you've become essentially masters at your craft mm, yeah. it all began with just a little taste that sweet buttery golden goodness the first memory faded but the hunger remained he'd heard all the stories he had to have it to taste it again. The search was on. Not in the Highlands, nor the Lowlands, not in all of Scotland, over plains and seas. He hunted for years through distant lands.
tangled with fierce beasts and fiercer enemies. He tasted many, but still not the one. The madness drove him on and on. And then, one day... Great Scott! He found it! Baked with butter. The original age-old recipe. The legendary Lobel Shortbread Biscuit. So let's let's take this conversation to a bit of a darker place. So mm-hmm. I, I would ask you, um, what has been the biggest challenge your studio has faced since its inception? Uh, it's first it was getting people to believe in animation, because it's really like a very niche and, market. And and by people, do you mean the consumers or everyone. the clients? Everyone. Ah. Everyone. It's to to get everyone to accept the animation is really difficult. Because yeah. like of the way that it's treated, um, that was the biggest task. Um, I would say we relatively had great success in getting people to believe in that. Yeah. The second one was making it, turning it into a business that people <laughs> would actually give you money for. Yeah, you know, and we were able to also do that, but it was very difficult. It took, yeah. Remember, I said like broken skin. <laughs> uh, I still am skinny, but I was skinnier. <laughs> And less um, broke now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that was difficult. Yeah. Um, and then after we were able to kind of tick those little boxes, yeah. it's finding artists. It's really difficult. Finding artists is really, really difficult. Like, um, you have a lot of work that needs to be done, and you have just a few guys in the studio. And yeah. You put out an open call, it's either you don't get a response, and even if you do, it's not good enough. So yeah. finding artists... And then the last one is staying relevant, staying on top of the game, and staying better than your previous work. That's mm-hmm. very stressful. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you have all this, you have all these things that you've released over the years, right? Yeah. And the people know you for it. And then you have a client that you've trained to to take good work, yeah. and then they keep on wanting you to turn out good work, and you get so exhausted. <laughs> you know, and that's when skill comes in, not creativity, because. Skill is what you're able to do when you're when you even when you're not creative, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> so you gotta still be able to, to to knock on that ceiling and say, "Yo, I'm about to break it," yeah. even though I I feel low. So I guess it's 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 a combination. Of it's, yeah, it's a combination. Nature. But I think the 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 worst thing is just getting fatigued, man. You get tired over time, you, especially if you turn it into a business. You get tired of the emails and all that stuff. So I guess that's the darkest. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that is the darkest. I, I, I kind of relate with what you're saying because you do these things out of passion and love. Yeah. And and trust me, you know what? Okay, very few people are passionate about emails <laughs> and, and chasing yeah. after money, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's not a good picture. It's not So it's it's and and many times that becomes some of the stuff that takes up more of your time even mm. than animating itself. And yeah. It's what makes like entrepreneurship so difficult yeah that it's no longer just you having fun it's, it's yeah. a lot more bookkeeping and, and, and yeah and, and other things you gotta yeah and the other part is that is what we talked about you mentioned bookkeeping that's amazing because yeah. like that's one thing that a lot of people fail at as artists you know yeah keeping your paperwork <laughs> in order that's very stressful and it stops yeah. being a passion at some point yeah. Yeah, yeah. So another thing that really fascinated me when we spoke to you years ago is you you mentioned uh, that the animation industry was basically non-existent. You know, it wasn't an industry per se. Is that still true in three years later? Is that still the same, or has something changed? I will say that it's. I will still argue that it's not an industry as yet. I yeah. still say it's a growing community. Because I'm happy with what I'm seeing in groups and stuff like that. There's so many groups that are popping up. And uh, companies are now taking animation seriously. And yeah. studios that are opening you know, with relative success. But I still am not confident that it's an industry. Yeah. It's still a community. Yeah, so I don't think that... I, I, don't, I, I don't believe that it's an industry yet because we don't have a net value. That's exactly what you said. <laughs> yeah. We can quantify, you know, our industry in monetary terms. Like, animation industry is making this much. So, I just call it a community. It's yeah. people doing it's something. People yeah. doing something they love. Yeah. No, that's fantastic still. Um, and, and more to your work, what is the least 
enjoyable aspect of animation the process itself and what is the most enjoyable aspect i it's, that's, that's a tricky one because it depends on it depends on the person i'd say yeah, yeah for you oh, for me <laughs> yeah for you of course um, it's never gonna be unless wow. you guys as animators are something you all hate but yeah <laughs> I, there's nothing about it that i don't like really it's fantastic it's weird <laughs> uh, yeah like i was going to say rigging but then I forgot that that there are times where I really enjoy rigging when I, because like that's the process of making giving something the ability to move. Ah, okay. You know, it could yeah. be quite tedious if you don't know what you're doing. And before you do that on a frame by frame basis. That's like, animation. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Rigging is done <laughs> once, but it's very technical. Okay. It's extremely technical, and since you said me pers- yeah. personally, there's nothing that I really hate because like I've been doing it. For quite some time yeah so now i very much enjoy it so i would say for me this is something that well i actually hate the things that are outside animation that's talking to the client and getting them to email the idea <laughs> yeah and coming up with a concept but once you start the process through to the end mm, i enjoy like the it. whole thing and that's then fantastic. handing over and maybe the least enjoyable is getting to wait to see people's reaction <laughs> they might hate it. They might hate it. Yeah, but apart from that, I enjoy it. Yeah, I think that is the 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 double edged sword of being like an artist is you get to create all these fascinating things, but on the other se- uh, on the other end of that sword is it might just not like resonate with people, right? Yeah, like you've put in hundreds of hours. Yeah, people, people <laughs> and people are just like the Twitter, what? The Twitter verse is amazing. <sighs> It's a brutal place. It's a brutal <laughs> yeah. place to be. I don't once, see many artists there, though. Yeah, we once released uh, a teaser that we did for Zol. Yeah. And people just started roasting the character's feet. You know, and that's, that's just... That's so specific. That's just like, come on, guys, it's <laughs> on feet. So I yeah, guess that that's the part that I don't specific. like. But I enjoy it because when they were roasting the feet, I just started seeing it. I was like, all right, fix the feet next time. So, yeah, I guess. The silver lining. Mm. <laughs> So now I'm going to take you back to that and this will really be like us like closing off our mm-hmm. conversation and I'll take you back to the start. When we spoke back in 2018, you said um, your room was extremely important to you at the start. Why was that so? My what? Your room, your bedroom. My bedroom? Yeah. Yes, the, the, <laughs> the bedroom was extremely important because I mean a lot of us start from there. Yeah. And I'm going to talk specifically for artists more than we start there yeah. because like that's when you get to really talk to yourself and that's the most comfortable place. You know, you, you know, you get to spend a lot of time in your room. We never get out of our room. And yeah. the room for me is where you're made, you know, because that's when you're most comfortable and that's when you get to really face who you are. And that's when you really get the guts to do certain things without nobody judging you, yeah. you know, and that's for me that's i would say that's really where i was built and then everything else was layered when i left the bedroom and then this kind of the space that we're in the studio right now yeah became my second room because of many nights that i get to sleep in this room <laughs> i can yeah. see this couch it looks like it's been slept on <laughs> yeah like because like you're you're working some crazy hours right, right. and you don't right. have time to leave and go home and then and you sometimes you got to monitor something and something yeah. like that so it's like whatever i was doing in that bedroom when i was starting as an artist i'm still, still doing, doing it the, there. the same here you know there, there were times pre-covid that artists were sleeping in the studio yeah because like it's just a lot of work and we enjoy it so much that we don't want to leave so you get to just shack on, on the couch yeah. You know, so, but it, the room Im- embodies the whole element of like, just moving my position can, can alter my inspiration. True. You know, like if somebody just comes <laughs> in and then closes the curtain, it might actually just put me off. Like the setup, it was like just you've, so, you've, it's exactly, just so right. Th- you've disturbed the exactly, harmony. Exactly, the harmony. Like. Um, before we, 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 we wrap up, uh, I feel like we have to talk about COVID-19. <laughs> um what has that done for for your your you mentally and for the studio what has that what has the impact been at first it was no great impact and i'll say 2020 people are just unanimously saying saying that 2020 was a bad year i say yeah relatively it was but for us it was was okay yeah you know it it showed 
corporates and companies that how necessary we are because people couldn't go out to film. So if they wanted an ad, oh. we were here on Silver the double. lining. Exactly. <laughs> we were there to deliver. So, you know, it was really good for us. Um, but the painful part was just not working as a team. Because as artists, we feed off each other's energy. It's so yeah. amazing. Yeah. You know, because like, you see, like right now, like it's just me in the studio, right? There's supposed to be other people in here. Yeah, yeah. And it's so heartbreaking that somebody's working from somewhere and if they run out of inspiration or they have a creative block, there's sometimes you can do. Yeah, there's not much they can do. They can just probably take a walk or something like that. But, you know, back in the day, I'll call them the heydays. <laughs> we used to just sit there and just have a chat outside under the tree yeah, yeah, yeah. and just talk about girls, talk about cars and stuff like that. And that that was just stripped away from us. It was extremely, extremely heartbreaking. And coming in this year, you know, business hasn't been really good, yeah. you know, for obvious reasons, we're in such, in such a good place. And yeah. now you add COVID on top of that. And then you add animation. Yeah. You know, like... <laughs> it's like super right. niche. Yeah, super niche. Like, it's the first thing that people want to throw out the window. So you got to find ways to make it a necessity. So COVID yeah. really struck us on that. Yeah. The second year now. So the like second it's a bit year. Too long. Yeah, just, yeah, we thought, because usually we do have a dry spell yeah. at the beginning of the month. But usually around April, May, everything's You're now good. shooting. And until we get to like doing Christmas ads, which we really do enjoy. Yeah. But this year, like it's it's been really. I mean, we are gliding. Yeah. Like we're not flying, but right. we're definitely not falling. That's uh, good. Well, so <laughs> that's what COVID did for us. But for me, I guess the worst thing that it really did for us is just exploded the studio in the case that it just redistributed everybody back to their bedrooms. Yeah. And people are not liking that. Like our artists here, some of them got really depressed. Like yeah. Like depression. Yeah. Like actual depression. And you'd, you'd get a phone call from like one of your artists you're saying, can I just come hang out at the studio? Yeah. You know, because they're not used to that whole solitary thing. Confinement. Yeah, the sense <laughs> of confinement. Yeah, so, it, yeah, the mental the mental health aspect of it. It was, well, really, it was tough. Yeah, it was really crushing. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I hope we cross that bridge soon. I really do. I hope uh, COVID is gone soon. But, you know, this has been like a super fascinating conversation mm. and that's what i love about like sitting down and talking to you is every time we talk it really feels like it, it's just one of those conversations where you're like damn that was yeah. a good conversation that was a good conversation it, it leaves you it leaves you looking forward to work exactly mm. that's how i would describe it. It, it it motivates me to go out and do something i'm sure you get that same energy mm. as well and so you know like thanks for for having me and you know like having this on tape and, and so we talk and we inspire future generations current generations all of that man absolutely no problem man it's um it's a pleasure great because i always like to give back to the community as best as i can i might not be able to answer whatsapps <laughs> as <laughs> as frequent as possible I know, like i know how you feel <laughs> yeah that's a tricky one because like you know like I, I do get a lot of people just texting me and just asking about all these things and it's really difficult for me to, to always have this conversation like on WhatsApp with everyone. Yeah. But at least like having an interview yeah, like this with like you this. like this. Yeah. This is just amazing because like you can just say, hey, just go watch this video. <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> we already talked about a lot of things, but thank you, man. Thanks very much. Thanks so much, man. No problem. We'll do this again and and hopefully we'll do this after there's a feature length film and we're yeah. talking and we're going in on that. <laughs> let's let's call on the universe let's pray that that happens soon Fantastic. otherwise we're gonna have to wait for a very long time <laughs> well i mean we've waited for three years and it doesn't feel like three years it doesn't well i mean maybe it is that whatsapp thing where yeah i see your statuses you see mine and you know this guy exists and we talk on occasion and yeah you know so it, so, it becomes that i'm but, happy yeah, i'm happy thank you for swinging by the studio we'll do it and hopefully next time Hopefully next time you'll be interviewing more than just me because I don't. Yeah, I, I really wanted the team to be here so we could yeah. get like a group pick and all that. And yeah. Having their perspective as well because all you guys do like, you handle different parts of the process. Yeah. And and so. And just also that I don't seem like a dictator. So they're, no, they're happy here. <laughs> and everyone was like, no, we're yeah, not. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. No, man. I remember last time I met uh, Will. I remember Will very vividly yeah. because I met him at comic stores as well but yeah 
it was a bunch of other guys as well. I mean, we can always have their pictures embedded and whatnot, and mm. you know, like just have them recognized as well because it, it really yeah. is a team effort, you know. Yeah, because I do like I mean, a big team. Like that's I, I guess that's how big team. is the team now? Last time it was eight, seven, I think, when I came. Yeah, so, we're sitting about twelve, thirteen now, and hopefully by the end of that's almost double. That's great. Yeah, I mean, hopefully it's by great. the end of uh, the first quarter, we should be going up to twenty. 20 plus so i'll just say this on the record we're going to be pulling out an open call so get your portfolios ready guys <laughs> we need you working here fantastic man that's yeah. that's a fantastic way to end the conversation it's like <laughs> i'm hiring <laughs> yeah I'll feel, but we're basically hiring so fantastic. yeah so just send your show reels and uh i guess you'll see that call when it happens all the best for the rest of the year man thanks right, so thanks, much man. thanks for that.